All right, where we left off, we're trying to deal with poison room full of poison bad. We might have to tank it. We'll see. <gasps> fight it! <laughs> Just fight it to death. <laughs> we have to very quickly kill everything before we all melt to death. No big deal. Oh man, the backland's having more trouble. They're not even actively in fights. It's just that they're dying of their lack of health. Y'all need to just chill. <laughs> you don't have the you don't have the endurance for this. Watch your shoes. I'm gonna be sick. You're not you're not doing greedy. No, send her there. There we go. Uh. Quickly. These cannons are encrusted with thick, pungent slime. Lame. Not to alarm you, but I'm slowly dying. No, you're not. Poison. You're fine. Patented cog. A cog you found in the, pa the patination chamber. It is coated in a thick layer of yellow slime. There we go. That's what we came here for, I'm sure. Get out of here. You like... <laughs> not to alarm you. But wow. Slowly dying of poison. So I noticed that the front line was dying way less than the back line. I think it's because these guys just have less health than the people in the front line. But also, Yaskier has an AoE heal around everyone around him because of the fact that he has the chanter ability that heals people. And also, Edder has two... he has self-heal. And both of those heals are upgraded, I think. So between that, the two of these standing next to each other can actually continually survive taking that much damage for a while. Because Edair is taking... He's he's getting healed by his, his constant recovery, which is also upgraded by the fact that he has an item that increases his constant recovery. There we go. So he has a really good constant recovery. And then Yaskier has... Uh, ancient Memory, which is an AoE heal around everyone around him. Which isn't very strong. Both that and constant recovery are constantly getting left behind by our escalation as we go forward. But, you know, once upon a time it was good. What are some of these items? Lore boots with four dexterity. It's not bad. <clears throat> you have one from your helm. What are your boots? For that matter. Those are actually not great boots. Two from your captain's cap. Three lore, four dexterity. Now I'm at 14 dex. 16 lore. These aren't amazing. <clears throat> This is certainly an idea. Melee accuracy every time you're missed is very interesting. Ah, uh, this is the this is another per kill helm though. Plus three might. The tempered helm's pretty neat. One resolve, one perception. Intimidating presence. That should have good dex to, uh, I think that's worth putting on my tank. Intimidating presence make, reduces the accuracy of my enemies, making him easier to... Making him all the more better at tanking, and then getting... Yeah. And then yeah, get healed whenever you get whenever you get a kill and so on. Bit of a dark appearance change for him, but still. Perception and resolve. It's better than lore. Technically. Mm. 
There's so many items in this game. All right, I think they've all learned to rest after that. Let's give them a break. Give them a wee break. All right. But I don't know if I've even really necessarily discovered the me the mechanism I need to get to beat this quest, but I think that was just one of the things I was going to need in the long term. That's why it was behind a challenge thing. Maybe Durant should test it out first. Mm, not against it. The gearbox looks strangely empty, like it's missing a cog. Insert new cog. You slot the new cog into place. The mechanism looks ready to run now. The chain's so rusted it barely moves. Yeah, we have a replacement lever for the slot. So we're good. Alright. So we have two of three required items. What the last one is we need a new chain. Oh, here we go. We haven't been here yet. All right. So I was right. I didn't actually know why I was getting those items yet. Technically, although I had read the journal about how there's no pry bar and then I had the pry bar in my hands, not pry bar, uh, lever. And so based on that, I knew uh, that lever was going to go somewhere. And now we know. There's an elevator over here. It's all guffed up. Got three chunks identifiably bad in it. So we're going to try to find those chunks. We're at two out of three. Hopefully there's a chain around here. Because I, th I think the other door was locked, wasn't it? Y'all are going to have a bad time. And while I'm at it, who's for Oda? Except cooler, because it freezes everyone. That was an interesting death sound you made there. Herc Blatt. Yes. Did you ever get Dangerous Implement? You got Dangerous yes. Implement. I never did get Alaf that skill, did I? Eh, I might have wanted to do that. Whoops. A lot of things to think about at once. Alright. Artillery lift notice. The artillery lift will be closed until further notice. The cogs are rusting and any failure in the mechanism could be catastrophic. Potion Master Arden is looking into pa uh, patinating the cogs to make them weatherproof. Okay. So that must be what the what patination chamber is for. So we found that already. I don't know what patinating means. The map shows the peaks and passes surrounding Durgan's battery. Faded red circles mark choke points. But I guess it's some kind of like furnishing or augmenting of the item that makes it sealed or something. Or otherwise improved. Like I get I get I can I can pick up the context for the word, basically. Guys, get in the room. That's always the slight difficulty with just clicking on the enemy is you gotta be you gotta send your guy in because they'll by default just hang out and focus on head on back and get the other guy oh he just knocked that guy down and left him there oh he's dead okay so by default they attack the moment they get into attack range which is bad if they block a doorway Maybe this will give me the context. Ah, that's the key I needed, I think, for the one locked door. On the treatment and preservation of cannons. This page seems to be from some larger text. We now have a treatment to prevent our prized cannons from rusting outside. Potion Master Arden developed a solution that seals the metal, protecting it from cold air. We've transformed the old armory into a patination chamber, where we're going to heat the solution into a gas. As the gas suffuses the chamber, it will build up a hard coating on the cannons. After a few weeks, the cannons will be ready for the elements. 
However, we can be careful. We must be careful around the solution. One of Arden's assistants scalded her throat just from breathing too close to the stuff. The rest of the manuscript has fallen apart over time. Well, there we have it. Whoa. Uh, pretty, pretty familiar spells overall, but they're here. So yeah, it, it basically had the, the basic idea that what I was figuring it was. It seems to be some equivalent of like glazing or something. So this should be where I find the chain. It's the only room left. Spiders, go! Let's tell let's tell them to run inside. Otherwise, the the back line will block the door. There we go. Now y'all's boned, and I'm gonna hit you with lightning. Vabizoom. Not quite the level of love I get from when I cast Chain Lightning in like Diablo 2 or something, where you get a really clear lightning bolt that's very lightning-y and instant and impactful and dangerous looking. I think they made Chain Lightning look like a will-of-the-wisp that slowly cut flies to each enemy, which doesn't seem particularly lightning-like in its appearance. But I also just have trouble seeing it in the mess of all the stuff happening on the screen. It doesn't really stand out, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to give your chain lightning a C minus, Pillars of Eternity. I've seen much better. <laughs> I don't even feel that strong when I cast it. Is this guy getting? Str I wonder if this guy has gotten any stronger over the course of the game. At the beginning of the game, my phantom was so strong. You really appreciate the difference of fighting with a phantom and fighting without a phantom. But, uh, I think that went away once we had six characters. I've largely... I kind of, I kind of summon summons in the abstract. I'm like, it's probably helping. But I can't tell that much. The Vent Pick. Stiletto. By DR Bypass. 15% chance to cast Flames of Devotion on hit or crit. Plus we, ah! That's the one that Palagina has. Interesting effect to have on your weapon. Neat. Probably never using it. <laughs> Get him. Is that just one? Oh, oh. Poor guy. Just one solo spider. Obliterated. Yellow gelatinous residue lines the bottom of the broken tube. If you say so, that'll do. Hagrin rust is over. Ah, there we go. Small label on the side reads "Property of A. Thoral" for use on rusted materials only. Unfortunately for them, they didn't need the uh, chains. I already forgot what this chamber was called. P pa patinate. They didn't patinate the chains. You peer through the hole and see a wide, sturdy parapet running along the wall. Several feet along the wall, you see a broad crack. <clears throat> it appears to lead to another room. Look down. Wind whistles by your ears. The peaks of the White March rise below you and continue to the distance. Okay, that sounds wildly dangerous. That's a good time to save. <laughs> Send someone onto the ledge. Uh, who has the highest dexterity? I assume that this is a dexterity check. Right? 14, 11, 12, 11, 15. My highest dexterity is Aloth. Interesting. But his might isn't great. I don't know, I would take it to be. Let's find out. Send someone onto the ledge. Aloth. Aloth sidles across the ledge. That's what he looks like. 
use might. I guess he just punched the wall open. Aloth reaches the crack in the wall. A noxious eye-watering vapor seeps from within. Oh. Return. Leave. Alright, no, we want somebody with a high constitution before I break that open in their face. We have 16, 18. So Manet has got the highest constitution. And just in case, because it has come up in one other quest. We've had a quest where this came up. Oops. What? Go to the right place. There we go. Just in case, let's see if this helps with the vapor. Manet, huh? Bash through the wall. Rawr. Manea pounds on the wall. It's taxing work, but by the time the wall starts to give, Manea's shoulder flares with pain. I guess I should just use the chisel. I just thought I'd let her go into Hulk mode. The ancient masonry crumbles away, and a singing vapor rushes through the breach. Manea holds a breath and clings to the wall as the rest of the gas escapes. Yeah, she has plenty constitution. Enter the room through the widened crack. The party continues into the newly created room. Where am I? Oh. Hmm. That literally just took me back into the same place. Ah. Uh, I guess I should have expected that. I was just curious. Alright. Well, at least I harmed her for no reason. Well, that was my fault for a different, different reason, which is that I didn't just... I didn't just freaking let her... Uh, use the chisel. You pour the contents of the vial onto the chain. The solvent hisses as it dribbles down, melting the rust into a slick brown puddle. Well, there we go. We should be good now. Pull the lever. The lift at last shudders into motion, lifting you towards the clouds. With the use of cannons, they might be able to defend themselves. The lift makes slow, jouncing progress. It lurches every few feet, at the rusted chains groaning like the dead. <laughs> it comes to a trembling stop, and the entire platform swings precariously. A sharp metallic odor emanates from one of the winces, winches. You hear screeching. At first you think it's coming from the winch, but then you realize it's coming from above. It's the bat people. Yep. An enormous Skuldrax swoops from the shadows. You feel the air from its passage as the it whooshes past you. But before you can catch more than a glimpse, it's circling back, searching for you with ear-splitting shrieks. Rustling wings and heavy musk alert you to the presence of more beasts. As they close, the platform continues to sway and bounce. So make a stand at the center of the, of the platform or scatter around the edges. Or send someone to fix the winch. Uh, Karak could. The Devil of Karak has the highest mechanic skill. Smoke rises from the rattling, grinding winch. Repairing it will be a chore. In addition, the Skuldrax sweep through the air above the platform, their ears swiveling and twitching as they listen for movement. Who will go? Devil of Karak. Stealth 8. Ooh. She does have stealth and mechanics. Neat. Head low, Devil of Karak darts towards the winch on quick, silent feet. The Devil of Karak reaches the winch and sets to work on the jammed, rusted cogs within. Unfortunately, the problem looks increasingly complex. It's not clear how quickly or whether Devil of Karak can repair the winch. Good job. Good job. Keep going. Give it, just give it a go. The largest Skuldrak dives for the middle of the lift. It screeches, turn to hisses, as it spews sizzling acid across the platform. It scalds you. Your own scream rings in your ears, and you smell burning flesh. The smaller Skuldrak zip past in tighter and tighter circles as they close. Meanwhile, the largest of the bunch is wheeling back, preparing for another attack. Yet some of the creatures turn to the winch, their ears twitching at the clinging racket. It's not clear how much longer it'll take to repair the, the device. Come on, whip out that fucking mech skill. You're made of this. <laughs> uh, I wonder if any of these options actually lead to you fighting. 
like in a in-game fight or if it's a dialogue fight. I'm curious. I feel like our party could defend against incoming acid a little better than just taking it to the face. Continue fixing. One Skulljack breaks from the, the pack and plummets towards the winch, ramming Devil of Carrick's shoulder with its blunt head. Within moments, Devil of Carrick has cleared the jam. Mechanics 10. Devil of Carrick rushes back to the lever. Just then, the large Skulljack swoops overhead and spews acid. It misses Devil of Carrick, but catches you and the rest of the platform in the spray. The rest of the- it hit everything in the platform except for just where Devil of Karak was. It's a, a lot of spray. It's a very big platform. Devil of Karak yanks on the lever. The chains rattle and clink, and the platform starts to move. The Skulldracks scatter. Why would they do that? Are they afraid of mechanical sounds? As the lift resumes its climb, the startled Skulldrak retreat back into the shadows. The platform rises from the tower and you feel the cold wind on your face. They really need to de deal with that entire infestation if they ever want to be able to use this this castle correctly. That's a huge problem. There's so many monsters around here. I guess the idea is that the rubble was never cleared, so I couldn't deal with it back then. Because I needed somebody like me to come through and fix this place because it's a death trap. Everything's just murdery. Oh my god, there's so many negative effects on the party. Severe burn, minus 2 dexterity, minus 8 DR against burn. My, severe wound, minus 50% healing received. Alright. We're... Camping's not allowed in this area, of course. Because that, that's, that's what would solve the problem. Major adventure completed. Z Zawa returns the stronghold with average reputation from Divine's Bay and items. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no more dialogue. Just... Aha! Task complete. What was the task? No one knows. Woo! Heard you could drop a pan from up here and it would kill a man. Nah, that's a myth. Through the gap, you see winding stairs and dull glint of more cannons. Yeah, no, you, you, uh, you can't drop a coin off of a building and kill somebody. It hits terminal velocity. That, I mean, it, its terminal velocity is way too low compared to what it would take to kill someone. Which sometimes people think terminal velocity means the speed it takes to kill someone, but that's not what it means. It just happens to sound, you know, it does have the word terminal in it, so I get why the confusion comes up. But terminal just means terminal velocity just means the point at which your something that's falling reaches equilibrium. Because the longer you fall, gravity continues to act on you for every second you're falling, so you accelerate more and more. Well, no, you accelerate at a fixed rate, which is the 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 constant of gravity. Minus the counteraction of wind and so on. Uh, you, but you, your velocity is getting faster and faster. Your acceleration is constant. And so as you keep going faster and faster and faster and faster, you eventually hit a point where the amount of like w like the, the air pushing back against you from falling and so on uh, will eventually e reach an equilibrium with the acceleration to the point where you just stop accelerating and you just now are just going at a fixed velocity, which is very fast. That's why when you fall for long enough, you die. Because you hit a velocity that's so high that when you do collide with something, you will die. Which is not why it's called terminal velocity, though. Terminal velocity is just the speed at which you stop accelerating. Which happens to also be, uh, deadly. <laughs> uh, but a terminal velocity for an object that's not a human is, uh, is just not nearly as fast oftentimes, but also the shape and size and weight of the object significantly affect its usefulness as a projectile. In the case of a coin, a coin is very flat, at least on one side. So it catches a ton of wind, it gets a ton of air resistance on that side, but then it keeps spinning, and when it's spinning, the other side doesn't have that much air resistance, but whatever. The, the constant disruption of the wind resistance because it's a big flat thing, mixed with the fact that it's a very light object, means that it doesn't fall nearly as fast. That's not nearly as much as it would need to, to actually penetrate the human body and do anything more than just hurt, I guess. So it's like more like, a, like being hit by a paintball. It's nothing like shrapnel, which is what you would need. Like if when an explosion goes off and shrapnel flies everywhere, that's the kind of speed you need to actually kill somebody. Uh, and a coin falling off the Empire State Building, which is what they're referencing here, does not reach that kind of speed. Nor is the co a coin nearly as good at being a deadly piece of projectile to begin with. Anyway. 
That's a lot of bad guys. Uh, Ed there. Help. Ed there. Hit them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the hitting. Caldum in his dumbass face. Good you. There we go. We're good. Just like Mama taught me. But yeah, killing somebody with a fallen coin is one of those urban legends. Like when people say that uh, Daddy Long Legs have super venomous bites that totally kill the shit out of you, but their fangs are just too thin to penetrate human skin. But actually, Daddy Long Legs don't even have fangs. Or poison. I mean, or venom. Also, they're not spiders. They're harvestmen, which have eight legs, but are not spiders. Kind of like how a uh, scorpion has eight legs yeah. and, is, and is an arachnid. Scorpions and harvestmen are both arachnids, but they're not spiders. All right, I forgot to take the helmet off. Adrin's notes. Who knew a creature as disgusting as a disease pudding could be so useful? Their ability to not only prevent metals from rusting, but to remove rust entirely is astounding. I can only imagine what sorts of contrapoints or contraptions. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I'm not reading that word, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not. I'm, I'm just straight up wrong. <laughs> I can only imagine the sorts of contraptions uh, we can devise without having to worry about exposing iron to the elements. As always, I get ahead of myself. Finding these creatures is already a chore. Keeping them properly contained is nearly impossible. I was lucky to acquire what few I have. So that's why those guys were there. I wonder why there's just random monsters in that one chamber. Hello, one-handed shield for fighter or barbarian. I think it's time for me to finally put a different shield on this character. I liked my little defenses bonus, but this is a straight up like progression shield of badassery. I'm glad that we're seeing more of these now. So it's already exceptional from the get go and it has plus one enemies engaged, which is a pretty good effect to have. And now it's going to get bound to me. Now that it's bound, I don't think anything changed, right? Deal 300 damage to enemies with at least 75% endurance to unlock the next level or 1500 damage overall. Okay. What a weird character look. Like this hammer, this this mallet, this, this club goes well with my mask as being more uh humble items but then i have this like scale and then like my over dramatic mega dragon shield like this and this look like two different characters mixed together and then i've got like jester pants on or something like a weird look like this character looks way more cohesive it looks kind of awesome actually yeah you got your thing going on that's working for you okay the hat's weird the hat's pretty weird yeah, it's a mixed bag for some of these characters. He more or less makes sense. His jet, his, yeah. It's a weirdly colored cape for this getup at the moment. I was gonna go over these armors again at some point. Maybe I will again. And I was like thinking that maybe some of these might be a better replacement or something. Plus 50% armor damage reduction when under 25% health, but that's the very last bit, but that's when you need it the most, potentially. But this has retaliation, which is doing damage back. I don't know. Bad at measuring some of these. Alright, wasn't I keeping you around on the off hand on the off chance that you'd want it? No, it's a blunderbuss. Silver flash. I was keeping it around on the off chance that grieving mother would want it. Yeah. So many of these people are now using unique weapons. 
And a lot of them are completed now, too. There's a lot of legendary items in this game. Alright. Huh? Huh? Here's the cannons. Those are long. The cannons frozen and immobile. Engravings depict the Pagrunin's journey to the White March. That's just the other staircase. The same spot. You turn the wheel, and a gust of steam blasts you in the face. You stagger back and fall, spiraling towards smoke and flame. You find solid ground beneath your feet, even as the air around you is in a haze of smoke and heat and shimmer. More specific, Miraculously says, even as the air around you is a haze of smoke and heat shimmer. Coughing, you bat acrid fumes away from your face. As you acclimate to the soot-choked air, you see flames leaping in the distance. Each flare bathes you with warmth, and even as you struggle to pick out the details of this place, something about it seems familiar. You can see little through the thick smoke, but the dancing flames illuminate a dragon's head cast in stone. It's the White Forge. As you start towards it, something massive comes crashing down in front of you. You leap back the sound of metal slamming into metal and feel a deep tone ring through the thick air. Re recovering your bearings, you find yourself looking at an enormous hand. It's dark and shiny with heat, but you see every bone, muscle, and tendon working in harmony beneath the bronzed flesh. The hand's owner is hidden behind clouds of smoke, but the hand itself is wrapped around a pole as thick and sturdy as a tree trunk. How is anything this big? Is this... Is this him? The guy that made his own body here? Follow the arm? You try to follow the arm to the owner, but the heat and smoke overwhelm you. You turn back. Follow the pole. You continue onward to see what lies at the other end of the pole, and what's responsible for the clamorous music, just as the hand rises again. It swings back down in perfect arc. A tower of metal smashes down ahead of you, raining sparks and glints of essence as another deep, ringing note sounds. You realize that you're looking at an enormous hammer. The head glows with heat and essence, though the purple luster fades as soul energy is sucked from the hammer and into the work underneath it. Inspect the hammer. It's a block of black steel, as dark as a starless night and shiny enough that you can see a reflection in it. It's a work of art itself. A study of simple yet perfect design. Get a closer look at the work. As the hammer rises once more, you dart forward to see what lies beneath it. A lone figure sprawls on an ex- that is him, his body, isn't it? On an expanse of steel as smooth and broad as lake ice. The figure itself is enormous. A mage folk of twisted flesh and forged metal. Its arms edged in two spiked clubs, and its head is a blunt eyeless wedge. It opens its mouth and keens. The desperation in that noise reminds you of a newborn's fear and confusion. Air rushes at your back. You look up and see the hammer, its head once more glowing with essence, speeding towards you. You awaken to the sensation of warm tiles beneath your face. You're prone before the boiler, which drones on, pushing heat through the tower floor. But in the vapor that pushes from the boiler and pipes, you smell the fumes of the White Forge. So this seems to be a whole thing set up just to keep these cannons from freezing. They're all connected to it directly. That's rather dramatic. Yeah, that's about right. It's also rather leaky.
Look at all these gas, little, little leaking gas everywhere. All right, well that was neat. We had a good time. That's a lot of choices. Front gates, I guess? That's who we want to talk to. I can appreciate a fast travel system when we're in an area that I've already claimed ownership of or cleared or whatever that has so many different parts to it. That kind of thing would come in handy when I'm going to uh, Cadnua, the ability to teleport directly to the particular building I feel like going to as opposed to showing up the front gate and then walking through with sometimes multiple loading screens. In addition to the, the repeating dialogue and all that. That was incredible! Whole Forge spit flames when you did whatever you did. And the smoke! Ha! I saw it from here! And now to see about these cannons. She rubs her hands together. She starts for the door, then she remembers something. This is for you. Found it while we were cleaning out the battery. Now, how do these cannons work? Uh, if only I could show you. But everyone else is all worried about accidents and injuries. Shh. So they've said I can't fire them until there's a real need. That's a terrible idea. If you can't fire them until you need to, that means you don't test the weapons at all, and they might just explode when you wanted them to work. Tell me about the iron flail. They came out here a few weeks back and asked us to vacate the forge, real nice-like. When we told them to turn around or we do them like we did their fellow Widewin, things got rough. They went to their fort, but they'll be back for sure. Darien sent a group from Stalwart to Parley, but they never made it back. She gives you a knowing look. So it's a good thing you got these guns working. We'll be ready for those raid sarens when they come for us. What are you doing out here? I'm taking care of these lovelies so they can take care of us. She gazes affectionately at the cannons, which she is incredibly far away from. You really like explosions. Well, back in Stalwart, I learned everything Dana knew about black powder, and a few things she didn't. Them she wasn't so happy about. She frowns, looking momentarily distracted. After what might have been a small mishap in the stalwart mines, they sent me here to put my talents to better use. Farewell. I'm headed up the tower. Gonna make those cannons shine. She skips towards the door. Yay. She's gonna go rub them. Yeah. Oops, one of them went off. How could that have happened? What a crazy accident. So Nesta's at the White Forge, so I guess she's not here. She's at the core. Top of the West Tower, West Tower, White Forge, Great Hall. I'm gonna go to the Great Hall first. Just because they turned it into Fog of War. There's little dialogues here and there. So while I don't know if there's a... My main goal is to go to the White Forge to potentially choose something to spend Durgan Steel on, but maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but if nothing else, I should at least take the moment to run around here, because they made me- they're, they're putting it into explore mode again. Large streaked pots and dirty cups are stacked next to a note. I cook, you wash. Corbel. This dwarf gives you a quick nod as he smears the grease and soot from his fingers and his apron. A copper chain dangling from his ear sparkles red in the firelight. I know who you are. Wouldn't be in this place if it wasn't for you. He rubs the chain on his ear, flashing a half smile. What can I do for you? What is it you do here? I run the excavation of the lower levels. And everything else around here. Supplies and kitchen quarters. When you need something, you come to me. I want to see the stores. Let's get to it. It's a new vendor. He sells the White Crest Helm. Three intellect. Huh. Does anyone need three intellect? Maybe. It's all about stat caps in this game. I don't know. I've got a billion money. I have one billion money. As you can see. Dupe. And that's a duplicate. 
They have the same name that they're duplicates as far as I can tell with grimoires. Mace, one-handed, soul-bound. Bound, yeah, it binds with rogue or priest. That's the issue. That's why she was holding it, just so somebody would use, use it, even though she's not using it. Eh. It's a bummer. It'd be nice to give to Maneha so she can have another white weapon. She doesn't have any of those. The soul-bounds. But that one's just so restrictive in who it's allowed, who's allowed to use it. That doesn't leave me with a lot of options. Because both of those characters are ranged for me. I think he ended up paying me. Alright. Two constitution. One constitution, two survival. Has your intellect. Two from Rundle's finery. Was that? From your robe? I guess. Three is pretty good, though. Two from Unwavering Resolve? Yeah. I think I have neck pieces, though, that you might like more. Although you got this thing on? That's not that big of a deal, though. If I free up Unwavering Resolve, I can probably get you a better neck piece. Focus gain for a Cypher. Defense against spells, maybe. Not amazing. Ranger only. Awful specific. That's a ring. Should have sorted my type correctly at the beginning. Right, capes also count. Mm, maybe defense against spells, or maybe... Constellated Cloak. Bit of an awkward looking helm for him, but three intellect is good for his kind of character. Now he's at 19 intellect. Yeah. This isn't stealing. Taking your booze. If you say so, that'll do. This is also somehow not stealing. Oh, it's just the same one. And it also has a key inside of it. Mm -hmm. Which is a quest item. Somehow. Or a quest I probably don't have yet. They ran away like the tower was on fire, the cowards. Wengra's none too happy. Heavy stones block the hull. You a warrior now? Let me know when, when you head up to fight the monsters. Ah. I can get in here now. Am I supposed to get in here? Do not remove any equipment from the armory without permission of the arms warden Magrun or Captain Gregor. A battered helm. Oops. I did the thing. Now a ghost is mad at me. Yay! As it has twice before, your vision blurs and fades to black. When it returns, you find yourself on your knees, a shattered sword in your hand, and a broken, battered helm in front of you. Your helm. You can feel blood pouring down one side of your face, and you know for certain that you will never see out of your left eye again. Arrayed around you in a circle of other warriors, some, of, some from your tribe, the rest from an enemy tribe. They watch the combat in silence. You're going to die, old man. Your opponent is brash, but young and strong. Oh, I just found the third piece of the helm. That's what's going on. 
that that one of the, yeah one of the get all the pieces of this item quests which I never quite found I guess uh, the other one was a sword in Adnua which I never found either I don't know I don't even know how many pieces there are I have no idea where to look it sounds like a tedious chore because there's like 20 fucking floors and I don't know where we're even start looking for whatever I'm missing from that one you still think single combat was a good idea you do last winter's famine took a heavy toll on your tribe and your warriors were in no shape to fend off an all-out attack from its enemies single combat was your tribe's only hope but not if you lose once again the world stops the memories trail awaiting your guidance Pretend to pass out. You kneel over, surreptitiously grabbing one of the broken horns of your helm as you do. You lie there, eyes closed, listening for your opponent's approach, trusting in his arrogance to come within striking distance. Pathetic. You hear the crunch of the other warrior's feet near your head, and in a flash you strike, driving the horde upwards into your foe's unarmored groin. He howls in agony, but you keep striking again and again until he's silent. The enemy warriors snarl and shout when they see their champion fall, but soon leave your village peacefully, bound by the combat's results. Yes. Yes, it's all coming back. My sister. My reign. The end. Oh. Geralt. Geralt looks at his own spectral form with a sad surprise in his eyes, watching it begin to fade. But I've only just seen it. There's been so little time to know what to make of it all. Farewell, Geralt. He sighs. The wheel has no patience, it seems. I entrust my helm to your care. You find Geralt's helm in your hands, whole and unbroken. A big spike of experience. Farewell, my friend. Geralt's Chorus. There we go. Three Might and Retaliation. Another layer of... Re Does Retaliation stack across several items? Because that could be a lot. Hmm. God, this has so many stats on it. Three resolve, two dexterity, two constitution. Your might's not very good. You're a good fit for this item. That's a good look. <laughs> Color's a little off, but that's pretty cool looking. There we go. From... From one killer to another, I suppose. Ah! Mm -hmm. Ouchies. Stop it. It's like the one building I- oh, Durgan Steel. <laughs> it's like the one building I missed or something? Uh, I probably just couldn't open it. Yeah. I, th I probably just didn't have the lockpicking skill to open it the first time around. But then I happened to find the box that has the... What I, what, I, what I need in it here. Heavy stones block the hall. Mostly a bunch of randos around here. Yeah, Abaddon. What's, well, how is there such a big giant making... Clothing, like the the body. I feel like the body might have the body might have been Abaddon. Maybe the other part was Abaddon too. Hand me one of those. Quarter foot will do, but make sure it's not rusted. I'll look. If not, Corbel should have something that'll work. And where does this take me? Got to remind myself how how some of this stuff fits together now. Where exactly did I go to get... Where... How did I... How did I get to the White Forge? Oh, is that this? The Foundry. 
Yeah, I, th I think I may have found the White Forge just now. Yep. Didn't remember it being subterranean necessarily. But I kind of thought I was going somewhere else when I saw that entryway. Efficient refined Durgan iron ingot. We now create Durgan steel. Sure, I'll max out what I've got. Now I've got a few more Durgan steel. How many do we have now? We have four now. 15% of incoming crits converted to hits. 15% reduced armor speed penalty. It's pretty good shit. But I gotta really commit to whatever chest piece I want to use it on. I didn't just do it, right? Yeah, it's still zero. Now this chest piece. Can I even enchant anything? You can only enchant chest pieces... ...and weapons, right? And my, my chest piece, my, my weapon, and my hat are all unique now. Shit. Good find. More ingots. There's still more around. Nesta. So this is the fabled White Forge. Very impressive. I know several smiths in Crucible Keep would dearly love to be standing where I am right now. I was told the souls of the Pagrunen were bound to the forge. There's no precedent for such a thing, but I'm guessing that the value of the forge was boosted by at least 50%. These smiths work in the forge, though. What are their qualifications? Who trained them? Surely the forge isn't, be used, isn't being as used as efficiently as it could be. I think it would be more profitable if everyone, for everyone if Crucible Keep trained smiths were brought here to run things. Wouldn't you agree? The White Forge only works for descendants of the Dwarves of the Battery. You knew that, right? What? Really? I guess that does make sense. I'll make sure to pass that along. All that's left to do is write up a draft of the trade agreement with the terms and conditions we've agreed upon and present a copy to Tarfos. It'll still be a few months before the final agreement can be signed, but we've made great progress here. I appreciate the escort, Yaskier. Farewell. Go back to Stalwart, stay here. I'll stay here. I'm still doing stuff here. Lots of fast travel options all of a sudden, huh? Uh, it, was, it asked me if I wanted to go back because there's that's the that's how you complete the quest. Eye-watering heat wastes from the mouth of the White Forge. But for now, I still want to look around. See if there's any tasks to be done, which is what we've been doing at each stop. Uh, heavy stones block the hall. It seems like you can't. The map is still just, the map is still centered like this, but it doesn't seem like you can actually go anywhere over here anymore. Huh. If you say so. Confusing. Do. Camping supplies. Yay. Maybe I should have gone where she wanted to. Whoops. Do I have enough to make another one yet? No. Nope. One out of three. Alright. Let's finish the expansion. Yeah, I guess we're good to leave. I should have taken- yeah, damn it. I should have done that. I should have taken the offer to teleport back to Stalwart because we're actually done here. Whoops. But yeah, I'll finish this expansion, I think, and see if any big final items get thrown my way. And then after that point, I guess I'll try to commit to spending all of my Durgan Steel. Because I should really get those bonuses on somebody and actually ha feel the benefit of having those items at some point. Before, especially before I go into like the final confrontation. 
it's rough to have a resource so rare because you're afraid to spend it. But I do get to I get to enchant four items. So maybe that's the idea. Decide which characters will go with me into the final fights. The final quest trip or whatever. And then give those people Dirk and Steel Augments on all the slots that allow it still, because a lot of them are taken up by soulbind items that you can't enchant ever. Like, I don't think I can even use one on Yaskier unless I just change out some of his gear entirely. Palagina probably has something, although I think Palagina's weapon... I think her armor is probably a unique, whereas her, her weapon is soulbound. Uh, Edder's weapon and shield are soulbound now. Yep. And soulbound items can't be enchanted. The one downside. Huh. The upside is that they're fucking rad, except for the one that's not. How's this one going, by the way? Simple might be as specific as one can be when describing this dagger. Its handle is leather wrapped and plain. Its blade is bronze. It has no markings, no filigree, no gems or fancy metalwork. It appears to be well made, but is so unremarkable that it, has a, it is a challenge to judge. There is a sense that in holding it that there will be something more. If only because it is difficult to believe any craftsman could take so little pride in his work. It is difficult to say for sure, but the blade seems to have picked up tarnish with use. Despite the relatively light usage it has seen since you acquired it, it is hard to imagine that the blade was made so cheaply that it is near at the end of its lifespan, yet it does not appear to be far off. A single rune is visible along the blade. At first it looked more like a scratch. It seems impossible to remember now whether the rune had always been there. The leather on the handle has become brittle and begun to crack. The blade's original luster has dulled and the reflections cast into it are hazy and indistinct. A second rune appears next to the first, but the blade seems altogether worse despite the new detail. The edge of the blade has lost much of its original sharpness. Every slice is a labor, and it seems increasingly better suited to break the seal on letters than to pierce flesh. The grip has started to fray considerably. There's a third rune on the blade now. Perhaps it is the symbol for dull. <laughs> okay. So yeah, what happens with these soulbound items is as you complete the quest, more and more text is added to this feed, which I've had mixed results in keeping up with. I, I, I try to keep up with these, but I forget a lot. Because there's a lot, of a lot of different weapons now to keep track of the progression of and then remember to read them when they're done. We'll see that, though. I want to see the end of the storyline with this thing, because now it's just garbage. I'm sorry, Maneha, for making you use this. Oh, yeah, the, the, there's a final thing for this blade. After the kneeling at the pillars, two final lines appear along the blade of the Estoc. A penance now complete, a burden now a gift. Keep this weapon at your side to remind you of your shrift. I don't know what shrift means. Anyway, we took a Nightmare Cursed Blade, and we did the trials, and now it's not a Cursed Blade, so that's neat. Uh. What? Oh, that's a reflection to the quest I already did. I was like, who got murdered? What? Then I remembered who Hadi was. Hadi and Elwina were murdered, and I thought we'd chased off most of the brigands. The crew at Durgan's Battery said you got the cannons working. Thanks. Yeah, they're talking about the people that I saw murdered out by where Zawa's, Zawa's quest takes place. I was like, oh my god, a murder in town. Where have you got to this time? What? Royce? Who's, who's Royce? Where were you? Shit. I was going somewhere else. There you are. This woman looks at you like she's used to hearing bad news. She shakes her head and holds up her hands before you can even begin. Look, you can tell Hammond I ain't seen Miller all day. Besides, he gotta keep a better eye on his shop if he doesn't want little little ones poking around. She folds her arms and plants her fight her weed her feet wide. What's this about? She blinks and is suddenly embarrassed. Oh, you're the one who opened up the battery, aren't you? It's really nothing someone like you needs to be concerned with. She hesitates before deciding to continue. Actually, it's my girl. Mila, you're getting yourself into all sorts of trouble, poking around with that Hammond's Emporium. She rolls her eyes, but bites her lower lip nervously a moment later. 
But you ain't here about her, are you? Uh, you ain't here about her, huh? What's Hammond's Emporium? New shop. Built where Cade's home used to be, near the Western Palisade. Hammond's one of them that came up from the deer Deerwood. Sells good steel, but just about holds his nose every time he crosses paths with one of us. You don't know where your own child is? She backs away like she's been slapped. I didn't say that. Unable to look you in the eyes. Her gaze darts to the ground. Her cheeks flush with embarrassment. But it's hard keeping track of her. What with all the commotion around here lately. Do you have any idea where Mila might be? She's been out for quite a while now. That's nothing new. She chews her lip, wondering. Still, can't help but worry that she's gone and gotten herself into some trouble. If you can keep an eye or two open while you're out in town, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'll make sure she's not in any trouble. Oh, thank you. Everyone's so busy these days with the mines and the forge opening back up. It's, it's kind of you to help. I have a few questions. Show her the drawing. Do you recognize this place? She squints at it. Mountains and a cave? Is it, I think this is the charcoal drawing from earlier. Lots of those in these parts, she squints. Those lions were there could be standing stones, like the ones in Whitestone Hollow. Huh. I don't know why she would go off there. Is there some place Miller likes to run off to? She often takes off to Hammond's Emporium, she shrugs. Has a problem with looking at things instead of touching them. Hammond's been on my back the past few days to keep her away. Might her father know where she's gone? Please, don't worry about him. He's in enough trouble at his job already. She smiles weakly. Truly, all of us appreciate what you did, opening the battery back up. Folks like my Lodgar are making good money patching up all the damage out front. Please, don't set his mind spinning about where Mila is. He's Mila's father. If she's in trouble, it isn't right to hide it from him. And I'm her mother. A wrinkle of annoyance creases her forehead. I know you're trying to help, but I really think it's best not to distract Lodgar while he's working. Mm. Well, surprise task. We'll get to that in a minute. And here I thought I found- I checked with everybody already. It's hard to tell. There we go. Tarfos. Yes, Gier. Nesta presented me with the terms of the trade agreement. I guess we're keeping the fishery open after all. Funny. Nesta had mentioned something earlier about the investors wanting to shut it down. Can't say I disagree with them either. Looks like she didn't have much else to say about the mines beyond what we've already discussed. Good. She didn't mention any change to the White Forge portion. Strange. She's been hinting that she didn't think our local smiths were all that skilled. Guess you convinced her otherwise, huh? All things considered, the trade agreement is better than anything I could have negotiated. I'll sign this, and have it sent off to Defiance Bay first thing. Oh, Nesta left this for you. She said it had helped her in a previous line of work. She hands you a, he hands you a small bundle of cloth. Thanks again, Yaskier. The tax collector's mantle? What the heck is that? Stealth, escape, and smoke cloud. That's, that's pretty funny. I don't, th I don't think I'm going to use it, but that's pretty funny. Mm -hmm.